Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning, and you be the judge. Yes, we gonna we gotta get to the tea. This is Shelly Winter. Hi, how are you? How y'all doing, Doctor uh, Dr. Joe Joe Brown? How are you, my brother? All right, good seeing you again. Since you Atlanta, too, my brother. Uh, when Fanny was trying to get us to shut up down in the park. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Miss Dana. Nice to meet you because I, I this is really my first time meeting you. Um, I, it was some months ago. We just we did a back and forth on X message and I gave you the contact to contact the judge and stuff like that. So it was nice to officially meet you. I asked, you I asked you to come on because uh, I do want to play this clip before we get into it. Um, I'm sorry. Before I pull up the clip, because you did go viral, honey, on CNN. Oh, you upset a lot of people. <laughs> Please tell the audience who you are. Uh, my name is Shelly Winter. Um, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I am a talk radio host on 95.5 WSB Atlanta's News and Talk. Um, we are the uh, oldest um, news and talk station pretty much in the country, but definitely in the Southeast, uh, celebrating uh, over 100 years old um, and uh, probably a dominant station in the top 10 market. And I'm my show airs 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday. All right. I'm just trying to um, find that clip. The clip is it, on your it, it's on your um, um, on your ex. Uh, it's on somebody's ex. I didn't post it, but it's on somebody's. Um, uh, yeah. If you just want that one clip of the um, of what started the whole ruckus, um, I think if you just search Shelly Winter CNN, I have it. I have it. It's right okay. here. So I want to play this clip, and then I want us to talk about it. And I also want to talk about the record-breaking Georgia early election. Um, voting as well so let me just hit this i the editor in chief of, of bloomberg i, I want to move on to to what donald trump has said about um an, an issue near and dear to both of your hearts uh the issue of black uh, americans and latino voters uh, kamala harris has been doing interviews on black media uh trump though is is overperforming in polling with with both groups compared to past republicans here is what he said when he was campaigning in pennsylvania any African-American or Hispanic, and you know how well I'm doing there, that votes for Kamala, you got to have your head examined because they, they are really screwing you. They are really screwing you. It is Kamala, for the record, but he is denigrating voters for making a choice that he does not like. Um, Shelly, to you, what does he achieve with this? Well, how is it? Wait, first of all, how is he denigrating voters? He's saying that they are being, for lack of a better word, screwed. Taken advantage of. They're, they're being taken advantage of. They're paying higher pricing. They're, they're working class, the ones that he's talking about, working class, lower middle class. They're paying more for food. They're paying more for gas. And they're being taken advantage of. But and Shelley, over he the also, course of he, 30 he, years, he, they voted. He also said um, that but, they, you know, that they had to have their head examined. That That's... That is not something that is a compliment. Obama just told me the same thing. Obama just told me the same thing. I've got black women words. telling me I'm not really a... Uh, he, he inferred them. He implied them. He certainly did. He even threatened us with, you're lucky Michelle's not here. I mean, come on. Let's not make things up. Let's be honest here, and let's really be clear what's being said. 
if you're an African-American man, I, look, let me boil this election down in the African-American community to a very simple um, I'll, I'll reference to great Malcolm X. Um, this race is between House African-Americans and field African-Americans. And the field African-Americans wow. are going for are, Donald are, Trump. Are, are we... I'm talking about your men. Who, I'm talking about your men who build, your men who put things together, your men who work with their hands, your men who do things, not the men who push paper and the men who are connected to power and want to continue to be connected to power. I'm are you denigrating, about the men and women in are you denigrating, are you denigrating African-American men who are professionals who work in white collar jobs? Is that what I'm hearing from you or? No. I'm no, just trying see, to understand this. Go, is Shelly the house what I'm doing one or the field one? I'm just trying to understand that part. I'm, I'm just trying to understand. We have someone I'm who's spitting. To say, I'm, the, I'm just trying to understand the, the one field, that's spitting talking points right field. now. Are you are you the house Negro or the field Negro that you're referring to? So I just want to make sure your question was I'm about denigrating Trump, black people. I'm, that literally was your question. You have a I'm, Republican right, fool who is talking right now. About, it. You literally just said that it, black sir. men. You just you actually just said this is an election about house or field. This is the nonsense that we are listening to right now by those that are supporting no, Donald that's Trump. Not what I said, that, that, sir. that actually that is that's actually what, what you just said. you sir. there's only well, clearly you must be you, you must be in your own Trump. talk. I'm not I sure what kind of radio show you have that you can't listen to your own thing. So you actually just said for Trump. Again, said do you understand you you you, you, you sound no, absurd I do understand, sir. And I do and understand. silly. And so let's actually talk about the substance no. of your question. The no. substance of the question no. was around the denigrating. Of what I said is very the clear. substance of the sir. question was denigrating sir, the black and Latino communities. Sir, 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 the, su the substance of my what name I is said Michael. Is my name is Michael. Finish, my name is Michael. Off. And we thank you that. So the point here, All right, my the brother. question that was raised All right, my brother. around denigrating black and Latino communities. All right, my brother, let me answer the, the question. The are you going to let me answer the question? The concerning part. Are you going to let me answer the question? Shelly, you, you, you made the point saying it, that it, yeah. you, you made a point saying that you believe the that point I'm making, ma'am, Sarah, the, Sarah the point I'm making is this. The men who get up. The men who get up every day and make things happen with their hands, they build things, they're plumbers, they're electricians, they're working for Amazon. These men who, who are coaching seven and under football, not because their son or daughter um, uh, plays, but because they want to keep hey, brothers off the streets and they're volunteering their time. These men, these men are going for Trump. These men, and I used an analogy made famous by the great Malcolm X. So if you're saying that I'm denigrating anybody, then you must assume that he was denigrating somebody. So don't even throw that word out there again, okay, my brother. Okay, so Michael, the so, fact so, of the so, matter so, is, so, that's so, what so, you're so, seeing so in the black community. Shelly, we've so heard, I'm not we, denigrating we, anybody. We, 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 we have heard the filibuster now. Thank so, you. so the point yesterday. Uh, I answered your question. When, when Vice President Harris was in Detroit with Charlemagne the God, we're mm -hmm. talking about Detroit versus everybody. So the reference that was just made, he's essentially communicating that the people in Detroit and Milwaukee and Philly that are doing work, manufacturing jobs, putting in for their communities are going to vote for Donald Trump, a man who has no policy, no support, who called for the death penalty on black men and has repeatedly been against us. So let's be abundantly clear. You have a choice. You can follow the rhetoric of someone who is literally calling you a house or field black man, or you can follow the black woman who was a DA, an AG, oh, United States Senator, a vice Con president, an HBCU like alum, a sorority sister up. who You're is insulting. actually helping black people. This is the decision you have in 20 days. Silly to follow people like Shelly, who is black saying black. this rhetoric. We've heard his how filibuster. She black people? We could listen Sir, how to Shelly or she to Clarence black Thomas. Mr. Winter, you, you have I'm sorry. point. I'm just yeah, trying to let apologies. both of you. Yeah, oh, we really appreciate it's that. Fine. Thank you, Sora. I appreciate that. So, like, the reality is this. You have a scenario right now where you have on one side a black woman who is saying, how do we help our communities? To your earlier question, Sarah, around how can you do both? On one side, you have Vice President Harris who is articulating how we can help domestically and abroad. Donald Trump sent COVID tests to help Putin. So while your black families, house or field, and referring to what Shelley is talking that's about, misinformation, were, sir. were dying, that's were dying, were that's dying. That's because of Donald Trump's policies. That's misinformation. You know, it, it's 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 that's it's a matter of we, 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 we are going to leave this here. Yes, absolutely. Michael Blake, 
Shelly Winter, thank but you I'm both saying, for joining us. Why don't you correct the misinformation? Have thank a you good day for, for joining us. For your great thank show. Who is this house boy plantation Negro? This Negro that's so deep off into being master that he doesn't even realize it. And he doesn't want to be called sir. He wants to be called by his first name. He doesn't even have any clue about black life. For decades, professional blacks sat and did all kinds of things, judges, lawyers, doctors, professors, about calling black men by their last name instead of their first names. And this fool wants to be called by his first name. Don't call me, sir. My name is whatever in the hell his little punk ass name is. I wish I could have tagged the whole of his ignorant house boy behind. He's one of those third floor house boys for the folk that have the odd taste that want to come visit and get warmed up on a cool plantation evening. All right, so. Sorry. <laughs> this is so Sucking off Negro <laughs> embarrassment, spreading that misinformation. He wants us to support this helper who has been dedicating our life to locking black men up. And we got a man who is treated like he's black. And you want to expect that he's not going to be more empathetic, sympathetic, and just to our cause than the fool that was trying to make that cause happen? Oh, give me a break. And then the fool bought into she's black. Oh, hell, you damn fool simpleton. You don't even know what black is because you haven't done a damn thing for black folk. You've been one of them house boys and them privileged folk that run around. What do the youth call them? Boule now. Bourgeois boule. Yeah, bourgeoisie boule house boys who haven't done a damn thing to advance the cause, just run through the door when somebody who's got more man in them in five minutes than you've had in your whole damn life when it comes to character, you dash through the door and you want to slam it for your white plantation masses. Oh, that's sickening. I want, I want to give Shelly the floor. <laughs> The talk. I'm trying to help him out. I'm being his advocate. I appreciate you, Judge Joe. Yeah, Mr. Shelley also helps CNN views because their their viewership is tanking. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I've been told. Um, several several people have texted me and asked me if I got any money from CNN, and I said, unfortunately, no, I haven't. But uh, but but thanks for having me, um, Dana, and thanks for having me, Judge Joe. Um, it, what's 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 fascinating to me about this whole thing is that for years as an African-American conservative, I have been called all kinds of names. Um, I've been called, you know, Uncle Tom sellout. I've had the Stephen meme sent to me, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and you know, it's, it's, part of, it's part of the game. It's part of talk radio. It's part of everything. Right. But it's mostly part of being a, a black conservative. But what's interesting to me is that for years, they used that house term uh, to us, to describe us, that we were house African-Americans. You know, I don't want to use the word because I still work in corporate radio, so I don't want to get in trouble. But um, but they used the word against us. We were the house boys, as, as Judge Joe Brown uh, said. And um, so when I come along to go on CNN to flip that context on them, then all of a sudden, everybody's outraged. And I'm thinking to myself, so you can't have a debate with me about it. You're just outraged. It's something you called us that I'm now flipping this concept onto you. And I'm flipping it onto you. And if they were to let me speak and get me get the whole thought out, what I was saying was, forget, you know, Democrat, Republican. Forget that for a second. The fact is, Kamala Harris is endorsed by dozens of retired generals. You're no more the empire than a general. Um, these people work as lobbyists. They work with defense contractors. A defense contractor can't get a contract unless there's war afoot. You know, if there's no, if no one's firing weapons, then you don't need a contract with a defense contractor. She's endorsed by former national intelligence analysts and people who worked in intelligence. 
I never knew black people to really trust the intelligence community. Now all of a sudden they're jumping up and down that she's endorsed by these people. She just went to Pennsylvania and cheered the endorsement of form of, of Republicans. I, Republicans were racist through a year ago. All of these people were racist. Now they're all like they're endorsing her. So I'm like, well, then are they not racist anymore? Were they racist then? Like, where's the logic here? So my point was to Malcolm X's analogy. He was talking about leaders in the black community who were not doing anything for the masses of blacks, were just creeping along to keep their power, to keep their influence going while just making incremental change, if that, for the black masses. And that's why I use that analogy, because this woman is, in, is, is, is literally endorsed by a corrupt system and everyone involved in this corrupt system that we can all agree, Republican or Democrat, that the system's corrupt. And the entire corrupt system endorses her and the entirety of the corrupt system hates him. So as a black man first and, and a man second and, 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 and a Republican or whatever you want to describe me, uh, a fiance to a beautiful black woman, all of these things, talk radio hosts, all of these things that I am, I've got to logically say, if the corrupt system hates him, I've got to go with him. Whether I, I don't know the reason why the corrupt system hates him so much. I kind of do, but I don't need to know why. I just know they do, so I've got to go with him. I'm certainly not going to call a system corrupt and then vote where it wants me to vote, which is backing her. It makes no sense to me. So all of these people that are systematically standing up to defend her, They've got to be part of the house clan because there's no other way to describe them. I want to ask Shelly, what do you think about that black agenda that Kamala Harris just put out? Um, well, let's go back a little bit. A couple weeks ago um, on my show, I have been talking about the polling numbers for um, Vice President Harris um, for a couple weeks now. And I've been talking about the loss of of the black vote that the polls are showing she's losing. Now, here's, I do want to answer your question. I, I just, you know, um, let me, if you give me a little leeway, I appreciate it, um, Dana. I appreciate both of you. Um, so when people like myself were talking about these cratering numbers in the black community, um, these other guys were on the major networks, one saying the polls were lying. They had no, there's nothing that, they're seeing that black men are not going to eventually turn out or black women, whatever the case was. They said all the polls were lying. So this was a couple of weeks ago. Um, then Barack Obama comes out, says what he says, which tells you that they see the same numbers. And then she rolls out this black agenda for this agenda for black men, which tells me that you saw the cratering numbers and now you're coming running at the last minute, 21 days before the election to say, this is what I'm going to do for you. And I'm thinking to myself, to answer your question, one, anybody that's cheering for that agenda, you're a patsy, straight up, you're a patsy. The reason why you're a patsy is because you're like a woman in a bad relationship. Like the woman complains, she complains, she complains. She starts to pack her stuff up to leave. And now you're going to have flowers delivered to her. Well, the woman that stays is a patsy. The woman who continues to pack up her stuff and leaves understands that this is just something to pacify her in this moment. Um, and that's what I see at this agenda. Um, the fact that you're leaving it to the last minute to deliver to your base, and it wasn't the first thing you rolled out with, understand these people were the people that got you elected in the first place. They got Joe Biden through South Carolina. He became the nominee. They forced him to pick a black woman. They picked her. He picked her at the behest of leadership in the Democrat Party, which was all African-American. So he was forced. So she's there because of black people. So when you get pushed to the top, selected by Joe Biden, no primary, the first day that Sunday afternoon, you should have rolled out your black agenda because that's who put you there. Now, when but you just knew they were going to be there. So there was no reason to give them anything. 
And I say them not because they're different than me, only in the fact that they're not. she's not giving it to me because I'm not voting for her. So that's why I keep saying them, just so for the people out there that like to pick up on those silly things, right? Um, so you know what I'm dealing with on a regular basis. And I know y'all deal with it, I too. I deal with it, too, yeah. They're not like me. Right. I'm not like that. I'm not right. a punk. And by the way, that dude, uh, I'm older than you. And for my generation, when we talked about sissy, we had somebody like him in mind. That was the visual image of being a sissy. <laughs> so, so anyway, on the um, so so that's what I mean about the agenda. Um, um, that's what that's what my opinion is of it. First of all, she's not going to do any of it. Um, one, she can't do half of it, um, and she's not going to do the other half of it. What's fascinating to me, there's a part in the agenda. A Wall Street Journal wrote an article about this. I think it was yesterday. But there's a part in the agenda where it says the um, uh, $50,000 forgivable loans um, to a million black entrepreneurs. $20,000, not 20, 50, $20,000. Okay, 20000 to, to, to a million black entrepreneurs. It says in that agenda, it says black men and others. And so the end others is the key to the whole thing. The the issue becomes the end others means that you're not giving 20,000, 30,000, whatever the number is to a million black entrepreneurs, you're giving it to everybody. Um, and they're saying their cover for it is, well, we know constitutionally we can't direct monies to a specific group. Well, that's how they beat us in affirmative action when they added white women to affirmative action. Well, we can't do something for a specific group, so we'll add in everybody else, which means you're not doing anything for the base of your party. Um, so I just think it's a game and to show up at 21 days before the election or whatever number of days it is with your plan for the base means that you treat that you they're the bottom. Uh, you know, the, the Democrat Party is silky slim, the pimp and the black community, the black voter in the Democrat Party is the bottom. You know what? Um, and that's how they're being treated. And, and if you want to be treated that way, that's fine. But I'm telling you that if you can't see how badly you're being treated, um, then there's really nothing I can do. But don't call me a name because I choose to go in a di different direction than you, because I, I think that's more telling than anything else. The reaction to our vote because we're voting differently is so visceral and so emotional and so angry. Um, it, it just, it speaks volumes. And when well, you're talking about facts and logical, rational and reasonable uh, circumstances and considerations, it is going off a little catchphrases that the white folk had told them, the liberal whites. By the way, what did you think of point five about legalizing marijuana and uh, facilitating black folk, I guess, taking their $20,000 deductible so they can get into the marijuana sales business. You know, I, I, I talked to a good friend of mine who has tr been trying to get in that business here in Georgia, because here in Georgia, we have medical marijuana. And Georgia, um, one of the interesting things that Georgia did was they set aside minority um, opportunities to get into the medical marijuana field. Now, I think here in Georgia, there are two or three companies that are involved. Um, I, I think it's something that's good, but I, I go back and forth because I'm not a, I'm not a legalization guy because I, I think it's going to be a problem 10, 15 years from now when we have 12, 13 year old kids that have been smoking weed for 15 years that are just psychotic. And I can't afford that in a community that has 13%. Um, so I, I go back and forth on a legalization, but I think I think that this idea that if you legalize if you decriminalize marijuana at the federal level, this idea that everyone's going to become a weed entrepreneur um, is kind of silly um, because what you're going to create is not real businesses. You're going to create vendors at marketplaces, at festivals, selling bags of weed. And it's it's it, it it's 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 stupid. Um, well, let me so, ask you a question. I don't mean to interrupt, but yes, isn't it rather patronizing and insulting to assume is. that marijuana? They only she only had five clauses, and number five, twenty percent of her whole program mm -hmm. 
is yes. got to do with marijuana. Doesn't it strike you as patronizing and it is, insulting I, I, that you I would, would associate that with a primary interest of black folk with everything else <laughs> out there? This would be one of five subjects. 20% so, of your programs got to do with black folk getting high and lazy. So let me say, let me say this. Yes, I do. But I also know within that community, that is one of the big pushes. Um, there are people who have been pushing because they're seeing the money being made in states that have legalized it and these big corporations have moved in. So a lot of people are talking about it. It's like crypto. You know what I mean? It, 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 there's a lot of people that want to get involved because they see the money's being. So I get it, um, especially if you're getting the advice from entrepreneurs and black owned businesses. They're pushing you to do something like that. But I get the I get the. Well, we are, yeah, but did you look, look, look. I do. I understand what is, you're saying. I want to say point something. Is, why I totally would understand. you push? I'm, I'm not you so much, but right. why would she push? This dysfunctionality is right. something positive. It like the other one, number two, about getting black men into education as teachers. How are you going to get anybody into education? Well, like here in Shelby County, you start them off at 28000 a year or 32000 if they've got a four-year college degree. What kind of man is supposed to be in the kept category where he takes a job after college for 32000 36 so a year that's still on the poverty level how are you going to induce anybody into doing something. it i want to say something about the the um the marijuana thing um she was talking about because what she what she did not know well what she did not say and you know and she will not say she she's trying to paint the picture with entrepreneur and marijuana being legalized for black particularly black men to open up these dispensaries but she doesn't say anything about the state regulations that you literally is, is so many regulations with that. You have to know several politicians. They make it so hard, especially for black people, black men. And you have to have so much upstart money, at right. least $200,000 right. to even think about open up a dispensary. And then on top of that, go through all the document red tape and you still may be denied. So if right. you are not, if you don't know someone in the state Senate or in your local politics and they're all corrupt, so they're going to look out for their friends because it's big money. So so again, that's not realistic when you have state regulations and red tape that is going to prohibit that. So that's, say, you're ahead. absolutely right, Dana. And let me add to what you just said. So what it does is like affirmative action. So what you do is you set up this trick. You say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to help you get involved. And then going back to the Malcolm X analogy, what happens is five people across the country get involved and they're all 49% owners of a 51% of a company that's 51 majority owned by some white guy, but they bring in the minority contractor to put their name on it and then everything. And so you create this new level of rich people um, just like they did when affirmative action first dropped and a handful of African-Americans close to the Democrat Party got beer distributorships or oil contracts or whatever it was, or in the case of major radio networks, become Radio One um, because you're 51% owner and the white guy put up all the money, which is nothing wrong with. I'm all for that. But don't tell me you're doing it for black people because you're not. You're doing it for a handful of insiders um, and the people that are connected to those insiders. So you've not, again, you've done nothing for black people. And then we will celebrate five years from now these entrepreneurs that got into weed as if they had just work so hard and pull themselves up by their bootstraps, become millionaires. And I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, but it's really an insulting thing to judge Joe Brown's point earlier. But the really most insulting part of the entirety of the entire thing is that you rolled it out 20 days before the election day. And this, and this is what you rolled out for your base, for the people that if they don't vote for you, at the tune of 90 plus percent, you you cease to exist as a party, that you waited to the very end when you saw they were walking away from you to give them 
crumbs, essentially. And let me one last thing on the agenda that I want to go to the Georgia voting. Her whole agenda specifically for black men, because black men are the breadwinners in the family. It does not help create generational wealth at all. So her marijuana BS, those white men who dominate that field, they that they are the um trust fund kids. So they already had 200 K or they have family members and friends who have that money to give them that startup. When we talk about venture capitalists investing in black businesses, she don't even address that. She knows nothing about the economy. And that's another reason why black men gravitate to Trump because he was just at the Chicago economic club. He knows how to lay out an economic plan for all men to prosper. Right. So, exactly right. Um, yeah, well, it may make people money, may make people money, but I resent the idea that the thing you focus on is a specific, uh, specific avocation or opportunity is selling marijuana. That's just so patronizingly insulting. The old thing too. Yeah, I the other I agree thing too. Mm -hmm. I agree the with other that point thing too. How about this one? For the last twenty years. The Defense Department, Census Bureau, everybody has been showing this. Only 28% of each year's high school graduates are male. And that's for everybody, including, and it's worse for black folk. No mention about doing something about that. Only 32% of the college undergrads are male. Nothing said about that. Only 36% of the college grad students are male. Nothing said about that. Only 44% of the workforce is male. And that's everybody, not just black folk. Nothing said about that. Nothing about coming into the 21st century and dealing with science, engineering, technology, and math, anything like that. Nothing about entrepreneurial sh uh, stuff dealing with mainstream legitimate businesses nothing at all about that nothing about changing the way the culture is dealing with the emasculation of the country and everybody's supposed to be a simp and we're welcome some colored mammy running stuff nothing about that yeah. and not one word about the fact that her very essence and what she's about represents what's been holding black folk back for the longest doggone time, meaning male exclusion, black male exclusion, masculine exclusion, destruction of the traditional nuclear family. Not one word about anything on that. And then that's after consulting with who? Roland Martin, of all things, the Pillsbury Doughboy with chocolate chips, and that's supposed to be somebody with expertise on how to get the economy started for black folk. That handkerchief head house boy wouldn't have a damn clue except how he's been kowtowing and down on his knees with his mouth open for everybody starting from the abominable administration on, on forward. So, or maybe chicken killing Al Sharpton. Chicken killing or chicken eating? <laughs> killing. You got to kill the chicken to eat it. Probably this boy been eating up too many it. chickens. They gonna haunt his ass. So today he's the chicken killer, and the other days he's the chicken eater. But he does both. Both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. They gonna come back and haunt his ass. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. It's late at night. Ghostly oh. chickens roaming through his bedroom. 